The day has finally come. <sighs> today. Take a nap. <laughs> right? That that's right. Big day today. Big big day today. We are finally going to install the hard top. Yeah! All right, well, we are heading off to the boatyard for another day of work. We're gonna work on the hard top, but we wanna show you our show you our commute. Won't see Atticus again till the day's over and I get to drink beer. I'm gonna be looking forward to that all day. Don't die. See you, bud. You can do it. Time to head into the boatyard. Figure I'll show you guys around a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's an interesting boatyard. Um, a little bit more um, wild west in some ways than boatyards in the US. This is kind of the rough area. And then here's the area that's a little bit nicer. And uh, I'm heading into the shadow over here, the shade. What I like to do when I'm uh, doing my final sanding of primer, getting ready for top coat, is I'll make a guide coat. And the way I do that is I'll show you here. So I've got denatured alcohol, and I'll pour that into a uh, mixing cup, and then I'll use like clothing dye. So this is a powdered clothing dye. I'll put it into the uh, to the uh, alcohol, and then it turns into a dye. Well, so that will give the white primer a hue like a purple hue and then that way when I go to sand it um, everything that I've sanded completely will turn white so first of all I know if I've sanded it enough to make that high gloss and then B all of the little imperfections that you need to put a little bit more filler in um, it'll have like a really dark color so they're really easy to find and you can just go around and quickly fill them all sand those down, and then you're ready for top coat. Big day of finally spraying the top coat on our hard dodger. Ooh. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe it. Something's gonna go wrong. <laughs> this is the third day where I've set out to go spray the the hard top, and something's gonna go wrong. I was saying though, it's kind of funny because normally I'm real nervous when I'm about to spray, and today I'm not that nervous because I'm like, it's not gonna happen. <laughs> you know, like I'm just gonna go there and something's gonna go wrong. So I'll come back, have some coffee. <laughs> you know. All right. Let's do this thing. Set, ready. Set. No. Damn it. I just mixed the solvent with the base. And I made that mistake because the solvent is almost always in the bigger can and we've got this can down here. So I, I did this as if it was the reactor, but if you mix the paint in with the solvent first, like you're not supposed to do that, you're supposed to mix it with the reactor first. So there goes that much paint. Damn. So stupid. Well, we used up about half the paint, so we got the other half to go. Hopefully it's enough. Man, that was so stupid. I can't believe I... Oh, oh so frustrating. But hey, now it's time to take you home. Well, give me a cut. Alright, 
So we got the first two coats of paint onto the hard top. And then of course we ran out of paint. I've just been like, this has been one hell of a week for me. It's just been me making one mistake after another and then a lot of bad luck. But because I mixed that first batch wrong and couldn't use it, we didn't have enough paint. Luckily, Desiree ran off to Cancun. I like literally like ran her to the ferry so that she could get over there and then she'll be able to get back here all within about an hour, which is definitely within the recoat time for this product. So everything goes well with her and we'll be able to get another coat on. I'm actually meeting our friend Rafa at the ferry station. He went to Nervion and bought us a liter of paint. So um, I have my two-way ticket ready to go. Got the money ready for Rafa for the paint. And I've got a $10 tip for him. <laughs> um, yeah, he's going to be a lifesaver. Um, just been such a crazy day. We're just wanting, I feel like this hard top is cursed. Um, I smell really bad. I feel bad for the people around me. All right, back on the ferry again. Got the paint ready to spray that damn hard top. <laughs> Comes Jordan, our hero. Actually, maybe I'm the hero in this case. So we're talking about um, whether we want to move into the Laguna for this cold front that's coming through. What do you think, Bud? Um, I was just saying I think we should stay here. Um, where there's only like one or two boats that are up that will be upwind of us when the wind clocks to the north. Um, so I think we're in a pretty good position to test out uh, our Mantis um, primary anchor, which we just switched to. So I'm just curious to see how it resets in bad holding and in high winds uh, in these kinds of conditions. It's gonna be stressful, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but I, I'd rather kind of test our limits here in Isla Mujeres where we kind of like know the anchorage fairly well. So if we do need to re-anchor, uh, even though it's uh, late, uh, we'll probably be better off than if we were had to do this in another place so yeah I just kind of want to have confidence in that anchor and see how see how it goes what do you think bud yeah that's that's a good point um I I do want to like know like okay we got this massive anchor is is this the kind of situation in which it and it alone will work just fine you know, whereas other people have to use two anchors because they're not using a massive anchor. At the same time, I'm really dreading the experience because it's just gonna be like, I mean, I'll probably like wake up every hour or two and like check on everything, you know? We could just have a watch schedule, you know? Yeah. A lot of the boats, not all of them, but a lot of the boats have moved into the Laguna, which is way more protected from the north. Um, and yeah, I mean, the holding here is just so garbage that the anchorage is gonna be a shit show tomorrow evening. So the front is gonna pass through tomorrow evening, late afternoon. There's definitely gonna be swell wrapping around the island. So we're, we're definitely gonna get like a, a chop and a swell coming into the anchorage. And that's, that's the real issue, you know? The wind alone isn't that bad, but once you get a chop coming into the anchorage, that's when you start upsetting your anchor. If we weren't trying to test the Mantis, I would move into the lagoon, just because it's less stressful. Why go through a night that's gonna be sh that shitty, you know? But I feel pretty good because most of the anchorage is gonna be downwind of us, so a lot of these boats that are gonna drag, they're not gonna affect us. The main precaution that I wanna take in preparation for the front is get the sunshade down and just clear the deck. So get everything on deck stowed away. Um, and then I'll probably have our secondary anchor and road, like, you know, set up, ready to rock. Yeah, so wish us luck. North is about right there. 
um, the, the winds will start coming out of the north-northwest, which is about that direction there. And then you can see right over there is the edge of the island. The island is going to protect us a little bit, but there is definitely going to be um, some uh, swell that will wrap around the island for sure. Uh, and there's going to be some decent chop because that's a pretty good fetch. Uh, to the uh, to the island itself. We will see there's definitely a couple of boats out here still. There's uh, Uma, Kika and Dan. So there are, uh, they are our front buddies. Well, I just woke up from my nap got super seasick all of a sudden when we were putting everything away, so... Ooh, I just stuck my head out of the, um, hatch. Jordan made, like, a temporary windshade. And it's getting crazy out there! So I'll turn the camera around so you can see. Looks like a couple of boats might start dragging, so... So now we're facing pretty much... Alright, so things just got real crazy. Um, Jordan's turned the engine on. There's a couple boats dragging in the anchorage. Uma's upwind of us. They're not dragging. They've got their, I think they're rocking on. So there are two boats ahead of us that are look like they're motoring. Maybe they were dragging a little bit. God, I freaking love our mantis. Shit is hitting the fan outside. I feel so bad. There's this little like, ugh, like 27 foot boat and they're just knocking straight into this catamaran and there's nothing really we can do from over here. I just feel like a dick filming it, but uh, I feel so bad for them. I know how it feels like. And I think the guy in that boat is soloing, so that's probably why he's having such a hard time. Oh, makes me feel like I want to throw up. <sighs> well, he's got the rest of the anchorage to get to. As soon as we know we're set, which I don't know when that's going to be, we can go and try to help other people, but. We're just gonna try and stay in Atticus now and make sure everything's okay. Uma's uh, upwind of us right now. They're holding strong. Man, it's crazy how things can change in like five minutes. I freaking love our mantis right now. Squall starting to abate a little bit. For the most part, we held really, really well. Um, there is a small mono hull that dragged into that catamaran back there. Um, it looks to me like they're reset now, um, but that catamaran definitely got banged up. The catamaran actually it upset their anchor as well. So the catamaran and the mono hull were drifting, and they they were impacting pretty violently. It looks like Uma didn't really drag at all either. They and us and one other boat out here looks like the only boats in this part of the anchorage that didn't drag. So, uh, so far the Mantis is holding, that's great. A big reason why that was really a lot more intense than a lot of these boats were imagining it would be is because the wind was out of the northwest so there was a big chop because the fetch goes all the way to Cancun from the northwest. When we get the actual winds associated with the front, they're gonna come out of the, uh, like more the north, and we'll be more protected from that direction. Wow, that was crazy. <laughs> I'll just say that, that was just wild. Um, that, and it was like exhilarating, like it was terrifying when it first, when, it, when the 
squall first hit, it was like instantly five boats around us were dragging. And not like a little, like just totally lost the plot, like just, you know, a beam to the wind. So uh, that anchor symbol is where our anchor is roughly. Um, if you look up here, um, this is where we were kind of putzing around all day with the wind out of the south. And then when we started, when, when the squall came through, the squall changed the wind direction more than 90 degrees. So the wind was out of the south and then instantly it was out of the northwest and strong. I think I heard it was like 35 knots um, out of the northwest. And so what you can see here is instead of actually swinging that far to our anchor, because the wind direction change was so extreme and so quick, we literally just drifted from that point all the way there until the anchor until the anchor had had a pull on it again and that was a crazy experience because we like we literally all of a sudden were just heeled over and moving sideways and i thought we were dragging i mean that's how it feels when you're dragging but realistically we were just cruising along and there's absolutely no uh pressure on the chain at all so then it caught again right here and um, as you can see, like it just performed fantastically. Once it caught, we pretty much didn't drag at all after that. So I am just, like I said, totally overjoyed with how well that anchor performed. Um, I mean, this situation was about as bad as it gets, right? Like, sure, you could be, you could have stronger winds, definitely, but the holding here is extremely poor. Like I said, we had 10 boats around us, eight of them dragged. So you got terrible bottom, you had an over 90 degree wind shift, and the wind shift was from a totally exposed portion of the anchorage. The waves coming into the anchorage were decent size, you know, the bow was bounce up and down, and between the bridle, the chain, and the anchor, uh, we didn't drag it all, so I couldn't be happier right now. Like, I'm ecstatic. All right, bud, what do you think of the front? Um, I'm happy that this is it. <laughs> Earlier today was pretty crazy. A little bit scary so this feels more comfortable and manageable hopefully yeah. it doesn't get too much worse tonight we're gonna set a watch schedule and have some responsibilities for someone to be awake once an hour or so just check on where anchor position is the boats around us things like that so it's still gonna be a long night but I'm really glad we did this because it yeah it's given us a lot of confidence in our uh, in our anchoring system We uh, made it through the night, no dragging whatsoever. I feel like we've come a long way um, in like being able to trust our boat at anchor. Um, going from our first experience in East Mujeres to this, which is going to be one of our last. Hopefully, we'll be leaving in you know the next two weeks. So, yeah, yeah, I'm kind of glad that we came full circle on that. <laughs> The day has finally come. Ugh, today, take a nap. We, <laughs> right? That that's right. Big day today. Big We're... big day today. We are finally going to install the hard top. Yes! <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna we're going to pick up the anchor and we're gonna motor over to the fuel dock and actually install it there at the at the boat yard. So I'm so excited. I just. A, want this project to be over. It took way too long. I want to start cruising again. And then B, I'm just excited to have it. Like, I, I can't wait to actually have the hard top. It's going to be great. What do you think, bud? Yeah, I'm excited. Although, for me, it means more work now. I got to finish my Dodger installation. Yeah, no napping for you. But Jordan just said I could spend a whole day napping. Nope. Because Didn't. I'm so False. talented. 
wrong. So I'll be sleeping today and you can do all the work, okay? Okay, let's go. Nice and shady right there too. Comfortable. <laughs> That's so cool. Look at that. Oh, that took so much time. So I, uh, I got a lot of comments in the episode that I just last epi or edited. It was season two, episode 15, about my hair, which I don't have that hair anymore. But just because people weren't liking it, I got you guys a hat so you don't have to, so, I, so that my hair won't distract you so much from the entertainment value of our episodes. Hope you guys like it. <laughs> nice. That's your good luck hat now? My good luck hat this is my, I'm gonna spray today hat. And I figure a little bit of overspray will probably make it look better. <laughs> nice, buddy.